Hello everybody, it's Chef Dwayne Danchuk from Dawson Creek, BC, Canada. And today we're going to be making authentic Ukrainian kubasa. We're going to make it all up, spice her all, and then it's going to go into a hot smoke for approximately about four hours. So what I've done is taken a combination of many recipes, plus some of the authentic old original Ukrainian ones, and I've combined and mixed up and it's taken me many, many hours and I've come up with a recipe that I think is going to work well. I've also used a little twist from the Middle Eastern and added it to it. And we did make some sujuk the other day and the flavor and taste of that was amazing. So I'm going to add a little bit of those seasonings as well to my kubasa because on the fry taste, like I said, it tastes almost like the best Ukrainian sausage you ever tasted in your life with a little bit of Middle Eastern kick to it. So we're going to show you the spices here right away and show you what's going into our sausage and we're going to mix her up and get at her. So these are some of the spices that are going to be going in. I believe there's 12 in total plus we're going to have our ice water and we're going to start with dextrose our organic maple sugar. We're going to grind up some black peppercorns, some mustard powder, we're going to add some hickory smoke powder, of course our number one prag, garlic powder, onion powder, marjoram, kosher salt, and down here we're also going to put in a bit of red chili flakes and some cumin. So we're going to mix these all together. I do have it all calculated. Like I said, it took me hours to figure this all out when I compared it to my past recipes and the amount of spices to add to it. So the next, I'm going to show you the meat we're going to be using. It's going into our sausage. Okay, these are our beautiful pork loins we're going to be using. I have three in total here. Got a nice fat cap on them. So we'll check it out, make sure there's no silver skin in there. We'll clean them up really nice. And that's the pork loin we're gonna be putting in our sausage. Yes, I use a little better quality products, but you know what? Makes a lot nicer sausage in the end. The beef I'm going to be using in the sausage is a Top sirloin roast, which I'm going to cut up into nice chunks. Some people use chuck meat. Um, this is what I'm using. Beautiful. It's at a local butcher shop here in Dawson today, and I did pick up my pork casings, and I needed some pork fat. So they did have this organic pork fat. Beautiful stuff. And that's going to be going in as well. As well, at the butcher shop today, I picked up some natural pork casings. It is a little pricey up here. It's 26 bucks a pound, but if you need it, you got to get it. This is fresh from the organic Hutterite farm as well. And basically one pound of this casing will do approximately about 30 pounds of sausage. So I did pick up a little bit extra because my total meat fat ratio will be mixed up. And the total weight on it is 36 and a half pounds of sausage I'm going to be making for the smoker. So basically that's our meats. All our ingredients that will be going in to be ground up here shortly. And uh, that's the start of our sausage. Okay, we got our pork all cut up, ready for the grinder. And our beef's cut up as well. And there's the pork fat. Remember using organic fat there you go so uh we're ready for the grinder okay we got all our stuff ready to grind up some meat here our spices are all mixed up we got our mixing bowl underneath our grinder ready to grab the meat and get grinding one important thing i trimmed all my meat i started with 36 pounds but after, you know, you take it out of the cryovac, drain off the fluid in the loins, and remove the packaging, do all the trim up, 
The work total to about 33 pounds, ballpark just, just under. And uh, so you're going to have to adjust your ingredients and spice mix accordingly to that. So don't plan on making your mix up with the whole weight in the package. Make sure you trim it, get it all ready for your sausage, then measure it all up and mix up your spice mixture and get it ready to go. That way you'll be more accurate and it just gives it that little extra more precise job when you're doing a good perfect sausage. Okay, so we're gonna grab our meat, we're gonna get the grinder going and we gotta grind that stuff up and start getting ready to make our kubasa. Okay, we started grinding and as I'm grinding into my bowl here, I'm kind of layering it and adding some of my spice mixture as it goes. So let's layer, then I'll go back into the big tub over there and give it a good mix all together with our kier and spices. So I'm just gonna layer it a little bit and keep on grinding here. Okay, our meat's all ground up. There's uh, one roaster full and then we're gonna put her back in the big bin and give her another good mixing. It's my other huge big, I think it's about a 40 liter bowl that's uh, going. I do have some leftover uh, mix. So once I get these all combined in the big tub, I'll slowly finish adding the rest. So here I just kind of lightly, so it didn't get over seasoned and we'll give her a final mix later on. One thing I did notice that on my new grinder, which I love, it just, man, you could put a whole cow through that thing in about five minutes. But anyhow, on the auger here, um, it's made of aluminum, even though the plate's stainless, the blade's stainless. But as you notice here on the end, um, that's aluminum. And when it rubs on the plate when it's coming out, you can see a little rub mark on the plate there. It does tend to rub off some of the aluminum. It doesn't uh, go through into the meat, but it does build up on it. And uh, that kind of bugs me. I didn't get into my meat, but it is there. So what I'm gonna do is try to find a little nylon washer that'll slip on the end and protect it between the plate. So uh, we'll solve that problem. So you might wanna check yours. I'm not sure if yours does. Hey, maybe you've got a super nice stainless all the way through. I don't. So that's gonna be a quick fix for me. A little nylon fiber washer on the end between the plate and that's just all that problem okay i'm putting it back into my big tub now and i have the one layer probably going to be about three i have added a little more spice to it and it should work out perfect with about three more layers here and as i do each one um we'll add spice to it and then we'll give her a final mix i won't add the water till tomorrow yes i'm going to put this in the fridge overnight and let all the beautiful yumminess of the spices kind of marinate it and tomorrow we'll add the cold water mix her up good and get it ready to stuff into our pork casings there she is all in the tub put some saran over it and it's going into my spare fridge and we'll let her sit there for the night and let those spices get into the meat nicely all mixed up beautiful and uh hey that's a wrap for today a long day yesterday and not too bad today but she's ready to go well we did a taste test on it and it is perfect amazing that's all i could say and i sure wish y'all could smell it as well too so it's gonna sit like i said overnight and then into the casings tomorrow then into the smoker so wow we hit a home run man this sausage is out of the park woo there it is we got our big monster 11 pound sausage stuffer all set up ready to roll here you notice i got a couple clamps on her to hold her on the counter and i did have to take out my top drawer of the cabinets good thing my wife's not home uh to clamp it down they stuck it underneath there so it's uh, all ready to go. Should crank it. It's uh, double geared, quick or slow. And I uh, just got it yesterday. And wow, I'm so happy with it. And we also have over here our casings. They've been soaked and rinsed three times. So they're ready to go. So next I'm going to head out to my fridge and get our sausage. And let's start cranking out that kubasa.
Okay, those of you that are using the metric system, it's 5.4 degrees Celsius, the meat. And I did let it marinate and sit there and rest and all the aromatics of the spices soak in and the cure. And it sat in the fridge at 5 degrees for two and a half days. And God, it smells amazing. Just like to stick your face in there and just go. Rah, 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 rah. Okay, so let's get making some sausage. So while we're making our sausage, I got the meat in the refrigerator, keeping it nice and chilled before it goes into the sausage stuffer. Just a good little tip. All our counters are wiped down and sterilized with a bleach solution. So I think now we're ready to go. Okay, we're putting the casing on now. And one thing when you're doing this, you want to take your time so you don't put any rips or tears. I did spray the tube with a little bit of vegetable spray. Our tub is full of sausage meat. And I keep this fairly wet while I'm putting it on. I want to keep the moisture. And what I generally do is slide a bit down that. But just take your time. And uh, it slides off nice. Don't want to keep this right at the tip. I keep it away and I kind of pull with this hand and feed it on. But you keep the water on or keep it moist so your casings slip on. Right, pull back. Sometimes you gotta feed it a little bit and just keep adding your casing. The casing I'm adding now is good for about approximately 10 pounds. And we're gonna keep it moist all along. So basically that's it. Pretty simple. And sometimes it gets a little stuck on the end. So you need a little more water and keep feeding it. But take your time, like I said, you don't want any rips in here and feed it on slowly and get her done. That's the way I do it anyway. This stuffer is very fast and uh, away we go. I did take the paper out now because it, it kind of sticks to it, but this thing is kind of a two-man operation, or a guy and a woman. But, uh, you know, with just the slightest crank, it just flies out of here. Yes, I am sitting down. I have a special chair made up for myself here because I have had seven hip replacements. Four on one side, three on the other, even though I'm a younger guy. So, I do what I can so I can keep carrying on, but... As you can see, the sausage is feeding out just beautiful. Wish I had someone else here to give me a hand, but I don't. Just my dog and me, so we'll just take our time and keep feeding her out. You can see our sausage is looking beautiful. So it'll take me a while, but got nothing better to do. So that's how we're doing it, and uh, as you can see, it's turned out beautiful. So let's get her all finished and get her ready for the smoker. Well, I'm guessing by this stuffer here, we're probably do in the neighborhood with two people, about 50 pounds an hour, easily. God, it's fast. You know, you got to almost <laughs> crank the handle in reverse to keep up with it. It's so fast. But, and I'm only on the low gear. You put that thing on the high gear, wow. So you put it on the high gear, probably hit 75 pounds an hour if you could keep up to it. But, yeah, it's beautiful. It works great. There's our sausage. Our second big link. Hey, maybe we should go for the Guinness Book of Record for the biggest Ukrainian Kubasaw ring. Okay, we'll keep that. We gotta get her done. And then we'll tie them off later into our rings. So round one is done of making the sausage. So I'm gonna take a little breather here before I start the solo pressing of the second. So I have taken the time, dismantled my press, washed everything, shined her up all nice and clean because Yes, it has taken a little while for to do the first part by myself. So, because of the temperature in here today, I thought it'd be best dismantle it, clean everything up, and 
start the second round nice and fresh. So I'll be right back after this important message from no one. There it is. She's in the smoker and uh, well, it looks great. We're going to do about half now and half later on. Should take around four hours. Basically we're going to do it at 150 to start. No smoke. We're going to dry it out a little more. It's getting there. And then we're going to increase it to 160 the second hour, 170 the third, 180 the fourth. And I'm going to put smoke on it on the third and for uh, the last couple of hours to get the smoke. So uh, let's do it. Okay, and these are my choices of smoke. I'm going to use in the smoker today. And I'm choosing apple and cherry. I said I was going to smoke them the third and fourth hour. I might even go the second and fourth hour. Not sure yet. I'll let you know later though what I did decide to do. So uh, there it is, and uh, hardly wait to get these in and get that Cuba sauce smoking away. Right now, I do have the vent closed in the smoker, so she does warm up quicker because the first hour we're just kind of getting her all dried out and warmed up really well. When I do add the smoke to it, I don't want a super heavy smoke to the sausage, so I will open the vent up about half to three quarters and let her flow. And with the wind here today, I'm sure it'll really be flowing, so we'll be carrying on and keep you guys informed of what's happening here. Okay, we're all done the smoking. It is so cold out here. It's about plus seven, so we're going to take it in now, chill it down really quick in cold water so it don't shrink, and then we're going to hang it for a couple hours to bloom. So there's the Koopa saw.